Chapter 23 David's Last Words These are the last words of David. David the son of Jesse speaks. David the man who was raised up so high. David the man anointed by the God of Jacob. David the sweet psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His words are upon my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The Rock of Israel said to me, The one who rules righteously, who rules in the fear of God, is like the light of morning at sunrise, like a morning without clouds, like the gleaming of the sun on new grass after rain. Is it not my family God has chosen? Yes, he has made an everlasting covenant with me. His agreement is arranged and guaranteed in every detail. He will ensure my safety and success. But the godless are like thorns to be thrown away, for they tear the hand that touches them. One must use iron tools to chop them down. They will be totally consumed by fire. David's Mightiest Warriors These are the names of David's mightiest warriors. The first was Jashobim the Hakmonite, who was the leader of the three, the three mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three was Eleazar son of Dodai, a descendant of Ahoah. Once Eleazar and David stood together against the Philistines when the entire Israelite army had fled. He killed Philistines until his hand was too tired to lift his sword, and the Lord gave him a great victory that day. The rest of the army did not return until it was time to collect the plunder. Next in rank was Shammah son of Agi from Harar. One time the Philistines gathered at Lehi and attacked the Israelites in a field full of lentils. The Israelite army fled, but Shammah held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Once, during the harvest, when David was at the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. The Lord forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risked their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. David's Thirty Mighty Men Abishai, son of Zeruiah, the brother of Joab, was the leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Abishai was the most famous of the thirty and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also Benea, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once, armed only with a club, he killed a great Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Benea wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benea as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the thirty, though he was not one of the three. And David made him captain of his bodyguard. Other members of the thirty included Asahel, Joab's brother, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shammah from Herod, Elika from Herod, Helaz from Pilon, Ira, son of Ikesh from Tekoa, Abiezer from Anathoth, Sibachai from Husha, Zalman from Ahoa, Maharai from Natopha, Helid son of Baena from Natopha, Ithiai son of Ribai from Gibeah in the land of Benjamin, Benea from Pirathon, Hurai from Nael Geash, Abai Alban from Araba, Asmaveth from Bahurim, Eliabah from Shealban, the sons of Jashin, Jonathan son of Shagi from Herar, Ahiam son of Shear from Hear, Eliphalet son of Ahazbai from Maekah, Eliam son of Ahithophel from Gilo, 
Hezro from Carmel, Peari from Arba, Igal son of Nathan from Zoba, Bani from Gad, Zelik from Ammon, Neharai from Beeroth, Joab's armor bearer, Ira from Jeter, Gerub from Jeter, Uriah the Hittite. There were thirty seven in all. Chapter twenty four David takes a census. Once again the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he caused David to harm them by taking a census. Go and count the people of Israel and Judah, the Lord told him. So the king said to Joab and the commanders of the army, Take a census of all the tribes of Israel, from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, so I may know how many people there are. But Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God let you live to see a hundred times as many people as there are now. But why, my lord the king, do you want to do this? But the king insisted that they take the census. So Joab and the commanders of the army went out to count the people of Israel. First they crossed the Jordan and camped at Aror, south of the town in the valley, in the direction of Gad. Then they went on to Jazer, then to Gilead in the land of Tatum Hadshi, and to Dan Jaen, and around to Sidon. Then they came to the fortress of Tyre, and all the towns of the Hivites and Canaanites. Finally they went south to Judah as far as Beersheba. Having gone through the entire land for nine months and twenty days, they returned to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of people to the king. There were eight hundred thousand capable warriors in Israel who could handle a sword, and five hundred thousand in Judah. Judgment for David's Sin But after he had taken the census, David's conscience began to bother him. And he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. Please forgive my guilt, Lord, for doing this foolish thing. The next morning the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, who was David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, This is what the Lord says. I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments, and I will inflict it on you. So Gad came to David and asked him, Will you choose three years of famine throughout your land, three months of fleeing from your enemies, or three days of severe plague throughout your land? Think this over and decide what answer I should give the Lord who sent me. I'm in a desperate situation, David replied to Gad, but let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great. Do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel that morning, and it lasted for three days. A total of seventy thousand people died throughout the nation, from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south. But as the angel was preparing to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop, that is enough. At that moment the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. When David saw the angel, he said to the Lord, I am the one who has sinned and done wrong, but these people are as innocent as sheep. What have they done? Let your anger fall against me and my family. David builds an altar. That day Gad came to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded him. When Aruna saw the king and his men coming toward him, he came and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Why have you come, my lord the king? Aruna asked. David replied, I have come to buy your threshing floor and to build an altar to the Lord there, so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my lord the king, and use it as you wish, Aruna said to David. Here are oxen for the burnt offering, and you can use the threshing boards and ox yokes for wood to build a fire on the altar. I will give it all to you, your majesty, and may the Lord your God accept your sacrifice. But the king replied to Aruna, No, I insist on buying it, for I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that have cost me nothing. So David paid him fifty pieces of silver for the threshing floor and the oxen. David built an altar there to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord answered his prayer for the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped.